All right, guys, so we're going to do an example here where I go through um, using this data from imaginary restaurants named Moose Burgers and McTofu. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use our TI-84 to uh, create side-by-side -side box and whisker plots or box plots. And uh, this is a skill that, again, you probably won't have to do on your calculator, but you will need to be able to analyze uh, and compare box plots and understand uh, how to create them. So I'll go through, I'll create them, sketch them, and kind of show you, um, you know, where you can do it by hand, but I'm obviously I'm going to use technology to help me. And then I'm going to answer a few questions about uh, these two restaurants and ultimately decide where would I pick to, to work if I had to choose between working at Moose Burgers and McTofu. All right, so I'm going to go to the, I'll go ahead and go to the calculator. I'm going to put these numbers here so I can type them in. All right, so I've got my calculator. I'm going to go to turn it on first, if it's not already on. There it is. And I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to type these into lists. So I'm going to hit stat, edit. And I'm going to type in, in list one, I'm going to choose Moose Burger. So one, two, three, enter. And I'm just going to take, you know, a few minutes. I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but take a few minutes just to type these in. Every time I type these in, I always check before I move on to the next, uh, in this case, the next restaurant, just to make sure that I've got the correct number in there. It's a good habit to build uh, when you do that. There we go, my bad. There we go, 160, 120. And finally, 130. So I'm looking to make sure that I have 10 numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Great. So I've got 10 numbers for Moose Burgers. Let's go over to uh, list two. So hit the arrow over to list two. So 110, 115, 130. Now, when I finish this, I'm expecting to see one more than uh, Moose Burgers. Looks like they have one more employee at McTofu. That's not a problem, guys, just because the numbers are uh, have different data values at these restaurants. That's no issues. Not a problem. 11 when all is said and done. Last one, excellent, there's my 11th one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna find that five number summary that I mentioned before, where it gives me my minimum, my maximum, as well as my quartiles, quartile one, quartile three, and my median, all right? If you were to create a box and whisker plot by hand, you would need those things. So I'm gonna go to stat, calculate, I'm gonna do them one at a time. So I'm gonna start with list one, which is my McTofu. All right, I'm gonna scroll all the way down because I just care about the five number summary. All right, and I'm gonna write down these numbers, all right, on my notes here to the left of it. So I'm gonna write down, this is the five number summary. Ooh, let's get the work it right, there we go. This is the five number summary for Moose Burgers. So that means I'm going to have a minimum of 110, so minimum of 110, a quartile one of 123, I guess I could put dollars here, all right, let's find the median, quartile three, and the max, so all five numbers, so that's 133.5 for the median, and for the quartile three is 144 and for the max is 160. All right, so this is the five number summary for Moose Burgers. Let's do the same thing for McTofu. So my five number summary here, I should have erased this, I'm sorry. All right, so let's do the same thing. Go to my calculator. I'm going to do uh, stat, calculate, 
one variable statistics, but this time, since I want to do list two, which is where I put the data values for McTofu, there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to show you the fastest way. If you look down here at the number two in blue, it says L2. So I hit second and then number two, which will give me list two in there and then hit enter to calculate. Again, scroll down till you get to the five number summary. So I have, let me write these down, min, I have quartile one, median, quartile three, and maximum. All right, so here we go. My lowest number is 100, so 100, 110, 120, that's nice, so $100, $110, $120. Quartile three is 132, and the highest salary for the week at McTofu is $180. So there we go. There's the five number summary for both of these imaginary restaurants, okay? So now I'm gonna create a box plot for each of them using my TI-84, all right? And then I'll sketch them in part A. So how to do that, let me make it a little larger so you can see, move this over, all right? I guess it's this way, I don't know. Let me show that one. So I'm going to do, same thing I did before with the histogram. I need to go to second stat plot, all right? I guess that's not really helpful if it doesn't stay down there. And I'm going to hit enter on the first one. So I'm going to close that up. And I'm going to turn this one on. And I'm going to scroll down. And this one you actually want to scroll over. That was the histogram, right? You can see it flashing on the histogram. I don't want that. I want the box plot, which is this one. Now, there's two box plots. But you should notice the one I'm flashing on has those little tiny dots past the whisker. And that's saying that they will calculate outliers. If you choose this one, that means they're not going to worry about outliers. Well, I do care about outliers, so I'm always going to choose this one. So hit enter. We're going to do list one for moose burgers. So enter again or down, down, down. Hit enter and then hit graph. You'll notice it's not going to show up just like last time. Hit zoom stat, which is number nine. And there is our box plot for moose burgers. All right. One thing I notice when I look at this is that I don't see that little like uh, square or circle that's past one of my whiskers, which means I do not have any outliers in uh, the moose burgers restaurant. None of our uh, weekly salaries are considered an outlier. Let's do McTofu. Go to second stat plot. But this time, hit down, so you're on plot number two. Hit enter on that, and you want to turn this one on. So plot two is on. And just like before, I'm going to scroll down and over until I get to the box and whisker plot with outliers. But I want to make sure I'm graphing McTofu. So like before, I'm going to hit second number two, which is list two. Then hit enter, down, down, whatever. And then hit graph. All right, and don't forget... Right, don't forget to do this. I know that you can see both now, but make sure you always hit when you're doing a zoom stat or zoom nine. So zoom and zoom stat is nine. And now it puts it on the same axis, so we can actually compare these. So I'm going to use this to sketch my two box plots. All right. So let's see what we got. So this is going to be moose burger, so I'll do MB. And that one... Looks like it's almost symmetrical. Maybe this one is a little bit longer. What's the box look like? Looks pretty symmetrical. And this one looks a little teensy bit longer. And then for, this is McTofu, so McT. This one looks like it's starting further to the left. Let me actually move my McT a little bit. And my MB. So it's starting further to the left. And then it looks like when it gets here, that's where it actually starts the box. It's a little bit, it's probably the same width, roughly. Probably mess that up. Yeah, that should be at the median there. Well, anyway, I'm sure I'm making a mistake. That's okay, I'm just gonna sketch it. And then this is gonna go until there and then my outlier there's the outlier is way out here and you can use a circle they use a little square i mean I, if i'm sketching this i'm using a circle but it doesn't matter uh, the key thing is is if it's an extreme outlier 
which we'll talk about in a little bit, they'll use what is called an asterisk symbol. So that would be, I don't want to circle it. <laughs> this would be an extreme outlier. Okay, so now let me show you a little bit on how they did this. And I'll just kind of do it with the moose burgers. So this right here, since it's a little easier with moose burgers because there's no outlier. So in moose burgers, this first little whisker is the minimum of 110. So that's $110. This first part of the box is quartile one, $123. This middle part is $133.50, that's the median. This second part of the box, or I should say the end of the box, is $144. And this upper whisker is the maximum of $160. So that's where the five number summary comes into play. A little bit different with McTofu here. So let me show you how they did this one. This is still the minimum of $100. This is... 110, this is 120. I know my sketch is probably off, that's okay. I'm sorry, yes, this is 132, all right? But here's the thing, this whisker up here is not the maximum. You can probably tell this is the maximum. So what they do is when there is an outlier, which I'll show you how they calculate it here in a second, but this whisker right here is the highest number that's not an outlier. So in this case, if I look at the next highest number, I think it's 146. So this is 146. Okay, so just be clear there. If there's an outlier, it kind of changes how it all shakes out. So let me show you how they calculated that outlier, okay? I'm going to do it for McTofu. That's the only one that had to excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so let's go up here to calculate an outlier. So first thing you need to do is you need to find the interquartile range. So this is to calculate outlier. Now, since you don't have the ability just to like create room on your paper, go ahead and just flip over if you need more room. There shouldn't be anything on the back, I hope. So IQR, which is quartile three, minus quartile one, which is going to be 132 minus 110, which is $22. Then you take the IQR and you multiply it times one and a half. So that's one and a half times that $22, which is $33. Okay. Now using this number, and again, I want to uh, reiterate because I'll say this in class a bunch, but my decision to use one and a half is just because that's what I grew up with when I took my stats courses. All my teachers, all my professors use one and a half times the IQR. You might get to college and your professor might use two times the IQR. All right. It's up to you or it's up to the professor on how they want to do it. In terms of when I mentioned that extreme outlier, that number one and a half would need to change to a three when you do this. You're not going to do that often, but you might notice like, wow, this outlier might be pretty far out there to the left or to the right. Let's see if it's an extreme outlier. So we're going to find two things called the upper fence and the lower fence. So LF for lower fence, UF for upper fence. What you do is you take this 33 number that I highlighted and I'm going to subtract it from quartile one. So quartile one minus the $33. And then for the upper fence, it's quartile three plus the $33. The key mistake I see every year when students do this is they'll use the maximum and the minimum instead of the quartiles when they do this. And you'll never get any outliers if you do that, obviously. So let's do quartile one, which was 110 minus 33. All right, and then for my upper fence, that's going to be 132 plus 33. So when you do the uh, subtraction and addition here, you'll get the two numbers. This is $77, and this is going to be 165. Okay, now here's how I view it. And this visual works for me, and I'll say it in class, I'll say it now, and maybe it doesn't work for you. So when I look, go to in my house, if I'm standing... Uh, in my living room, I can, I can look out into my backyard. And in my backyard, I have fences, okay? I have a fence to my left and a fence to my right. And if I look to my left, I see $77. That's my left side of the fence. If I look to my right, I see $165. That's the right side of my fence. If there is a value that's to the left of 77 or to the right of 165, then it is not in my backyard and I would call that number an outlier. So when you're looking at the numbers for McTofu, 
All right, we don't have any out outliers on the low side, right? The minimum was $100. $100 is to the right of 77. That's in my backyard, not an outlier. But when I go to the right side of my fence, I have this value 180. And 180 is above 165. So because 180 is above my upper fence, 180 is considered an outlier. And that's why when we looked at the sketches or made them on the TI-84, it showed me an outlier at 180. So again, I'll reference it. Oh no, turn it on. Come back. Uh oh. No. Oh, wait, wait. I guess it's gone. But anyway, we already had a sketch right here. That 180, this circle right here is the outlier. All right, so I know there was a lot of information, but that's essentially how to make those box and whisker, box and whisker plots or box plots. So let's do some comparison. It says, write a few sentences comparing the distributions. And whenever I read this, I'm thinking, man, I better, rep I better mention shape, center, and spread. If I don't mention all three things, then I'm not going to get this fully correct. So when I look at this, comparing the distributions, the shape looks roughly the same. They both look kind of roughly symmetric. I don't, box plots are really difficult to, to get the shape or the idea of what the shape looks like. It'd be much easier to... Uh, look at the shape of this distribution if you're looking at histograms. So I'm just going to say these two restaurants. I think I should say these two restaurants distributions have roughly the same shape. But here is where I am going to mention. So, but McTofu does have an outlier as an outlier. So you want to mention that when you're talking about the shape, and that's 180 degrees, <laughs> $180. Whew, man, almost done. For center, center, I, I'm going to choose median. The moment I see an outlier, I know that I'm not having a distribution that's unimodal and roughly symmetric. So I'm going to use median with IQR. So the median for moose burgers, is what was it 133.50 and the median for mctofu mct is i think it was 120 yep 120 dollars okay and then you know i'm going to use the iqr so the iqr for moose burgers was, I guess it didn't actually subtract it, but it looks like it's $21. And the IQR for McTofu, we did calculate that over here, was $22, so pretty much the same. Okay, so that gives context. I, I check off shape, center, and spread, so I'm good there. And now the last part, right? The whole point of doing this is to compare these restaurants to see where you would want to work or apply for a job if you had to choose between these two. So when I look at these box and whisker plots, right, what I notice is, is that the location of my Moose Burgers box and whisker plot is further to the right, which is good in the sense of I'd rather work there because I'm more likely to make more money if the box plot is mostly further to the right. Now, I will say, I will give McTofu some credit here. They do have the highest weekly salary at $180. So if I had my choice, I, I'd rather work at McTofu and be the person making $180 a week. But if I'm going to play the numbers here, um, I should probably pick Moose Burgers because if you notice the lowest number, I'll highlight this, literally the lowest, the, the minimum or the lowest salary per week at Moose Burgers, 110 is higher than 25%. So it's higher than 25%. That's what this part of the box monster plot is, is higher than 25% of the data values or the weekly salaries at McTofu. So really, if I had my choice, I'd pick 180 at McTofu, but since I probably can't do that, I'm going to pick Moose Burgers because I have a better chance of making uh, more money, even if I'm making close to the minimum. So I'm going to say... I'll choose Moose Burgers because even if I make the lowest salary, I'm still 
making more than 25% of the employees at McTofu. All right, and that's it. Hopefully, again, you'll get more practice with this in class. And again, with the button pushing on T84, that's the key thing is feeling comfortable enough to use this calculator.